shots, the top two three-point shooters in the Celtics by getting a fifth straight win. Off we go with Elon starting with a basketball. They try to go inside to Riley Beaumont and taken away by Josh Hairston. Here's Rodney Hood. Jabari Parker. A rebound Koch. Elon beat Florida Atlantic, but nine days ago, haven't played since the 22nd. Led by as many as 16 in that game. And got off to a really rotten start in the second half. Went the first seven and a half minutes without scoring. Had to win it down the stretch as Cox misfires from three. But that's one thing you see about Elon. They want to use the three-pointer as a weapon. They try to get the ball inside to Troutman, but they want to play along the perimeter and get three-point shots. They got a number of guys that can knock him down. Good shot wouldn't go. Last touch by Duke, and Elon takes it. 66-year-old Mike Krzyzewski in his 34th season at Duke. College basketball's all-time winning his coach. Four national titles, 11 Final Four appearances. A lot of people think this could be the group to get him to his fifth Final Four. I tell you what, when you start listening to his accolades, we could be here all night just talking yeah. about that. You're talking about one of the greatest ever coach college basketball. And this team right here can score with the best of them. Whether they can defend or not will be the question. Kirsten rebounds the miss from Hamilton. Duke beat a good Eastern Michigan team on Saturday in a game that was close until midway through the second half. Quinn Cook struggled in that game, went just one for nine, had a season low three points, but knocks down his first shot today. But the thing about Quinn Cook, ultra confident, doesn't matter how he shot the ball in his last game, he's going to come out and give you the same effort, and really his production is more so from running this Duke team than it is him scoring points. Here's Lucas Troutman, leading scorer for Eli. Rebound Jabari Parker, who's fifth in the ACC in that category. Parker, a turnaround. Got it. And Jabari Parker is a great college basketball scorer, just a great scorer, but that was just a bit too easy for him. Whenever he catches the ball for Elon, they have to make sure they take away his personal space. He scores when guys are close, so you can't give him that much room. More than 22 points a game. That's second in the ACC. Behind just T.J. Warren of North Carolina State. Sebastian Cott starts the scoring for the top offensive team in the SoCon. Koch has scored double figures in four straight. Well, if you like scoring, this is one to tune into because Elon can put points on the board, no question about it. First foul of the day is a moving screen on John 2009. There are very few guys who can say they were actually a captain on both the football right. and basketball team. I mean, that's accolade in itself. To get the 2013 coach of the year, very few people on earth can say that. <laughs> this team favored to win the SoCon. They brought back every contributor from last season's 21-win team. Here's Sampson for three. Long rebound pulled down by Hood. Duke looks to run. Cook. Now Thornton will set up the offense. Hood goes baseline. Four players for this Elon team averaging in double figures. That doesn't include Jack Eisenbarger, who started the season injured and has been coming off of the bench. It's a three-time all-conference player. Omar couldn't hit. He's struggling over the last game plus. Parker with his eyes up, pushes. Lost it out of bounds. Yes, they said he did it by design. He wants his guys to be prepared to play when they get to SOCON. So they, there's no environment they haven't seen. They've already traveled, played at Georgetown. They played at Colorado and competed in both those games. And they're looking forward to a great SOCON season. Andre Dawkins in the game with the ball right now. Hit six threes and had a season high 20 Saturday against Eastern Michigan. Neil Jefferson in as well. Hands off the hood with the shot clock winding down. Hood with an off-balance shot. Way off the mark and a rebound for Koch. Now Cook gets the steal. Has Parker. Sampson with an open look. Hood took a chance. 
They got bailed out by the Samson miss. So that's one thing you see about Elon. They're not going to stop running regardless of the steal and the dunk. They get the ball out of the basket, push it down the floor, and they want to get out in transition looking for those wide open threes. Dawkins picks up where he left off on Saturday when he drained six threes. Speaking of threes, Andre Dawkins right on cue coming off the screen. That's one thing about his Duke teammates. They're going to set screens. They're going to make the plays to get him open because they know he's capable of getting hot quickly. Beaumont goes by Parker. Parker with a solid defense. And so from a standpoint, that's the toughest thing to pick up when you play college basketball is how you want to need to play defensively and bringing that energy and effort every night on the defensive end. You saw the worst team statistically on the defensive end in the ACC, but much better over the last few weeks as they've made some lineup changes. Rashid Suleiman with a nice pass to Plumley, who knocks down his first shot. And that's a guy who can really give them a lift. If they can get Plumley to step up, it's similar to what his brothers did in the past, and really just give him a defensive presence. They don't need him to be a scorer. They need him to be that size and defender on the interior. Koch rifles a low pass, and here comes Cook. Cook off the mark. Plumley tracks it down. It goes right into Beaumont. Duke will reset the offense. Uh, it's Marshall Plumley, younger brother of Miles and Mason. Here's Dawkins with a contested three. He can't miss right now. Harder and really has come back even a greater weapon than he was when he left. Here's Beaumont down the lane to bank it in. I think Beaumont with his first two went just one of five from the field against FAU last week. One of four guys in this Elon lineup scoring in double figures. Nice job that time by Cox to work around the screen and knock it away from Dawkins. Great defensive job by Cox, and you mentioned that he, but more importantly, he never allowed Andre Dawkins to separate from his body. He split right through that screen and played it physical. Plumley took it away from Troutman. Dawkins thought about it from 25 feet instead of hand to Cook. He should have let it go. Yeah, why I mean, not that, at this that, point? That's the heat check right there. You got to let it go. I'm sure he wouldn't have gotten in trouble for that one. Suleiman into a crotch ESPN. That's the New Year's Eve treat right mm -hmm. there. Don't tell anyone that I'll have my watch ESPN app on my iPad. Got to. Driving home. <laughs> no, driving. You can't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Back door for Koch. But out of bounds. And Duke never touched it. So they take it on the fifth Elon turnover already. I guess I can listen to it, though, right? You I just could. Don't have to watch it. Right. Okay. Yeah. But you're still using your watch ESPN app, and that's what oh, matters. Of that's that's yeah. all that matters. So Duke, the top offensive team in the ACC, with one of the nation's top scoring tandems, including this guy, Parker. Offensive rebound from Jefferson, and he lays it in. He had 14 boards in 21 minutes against Eastern Michigan on Saturday. And often forgotten about it. People may not remember, Emil Jefferson two years ago was one of the highest scoring players coming out of high school. Similar to a guy like C.J. Warren at NC State. He's Elon down a dozen in the early going. With a cold shooting start to this game. Hood defends Troutman. A dangerous pass that Cook got his hand on. Troutman able to recover and works through Quinn, but travels. But that's the type of level that Jabari Barker is playing at, and I think probably even better than, than Carmelo did his one year at Syracuse. Does he have the tools to become an elite defender? Honestly, I don't think that's his strength. As we see Rodney Hood with the turnaround, we talk about another offensively yeah. gifted guy. But I don't think it's really his strength. I think that, you know, Jabari wants to be good at every aspect of the game, but he's a good athlete, not a great athlete. And most of, most of those elite at defenders are just extreme athletes. When you think about guys like LeBron James and Paul George, that's an Andrew Wiggins type. I think he can be in that category of a guy who's a great defensive player. But Jabari's offensive package is just off the charts. Here is Parker with Beaumont drawing the task of defending him. Now Cook around a Parker screen. Here's Hairston. He got blocked. Troutman with a rejection. Here comes Elon. 
So good in transition. This is why Sampson got it. First three of the game for the nation, one of the nation's best three-point shooting teams. And of course, he knocked it down, but you've got to give a lot of credit to Austin Hamilton, and that's one of the things that Coach Matheny talked about. He doesn't care if Hamilton takes a shot or not. He needs him to continue to put pressure on Duke's defense, getting into the paint and finding his shooters on the perimeter. Elon started 0 of 5 from outside. That three from Sampson, their first. They'll need to be able to shoot it to have a chance in this game. Hamilton with a floater. Over defensive stops into offensive possessions and especially getting shots behind the three-point line. And they played Colorado and Georgetown both tough. Made 25 threes combined in those games. Dawkins again from outside. His third three of the game. I have people come to me all the time about who are the best shooters in the country. Michigan, uh, Stiles gets at Michigan, a number of guys, but you have to put Andre Dawkins right at the top of that list. When you think about he shoots contested shots wide open, it doesn't matter. Every time he lets it go, you feel like it's supposed to go in, and I'm sure even if it doesn't, to him it feels like it did. One of the best in Duke history percentage-wise from outside. Shot clock inside of 10. Hamilton gets inside, runner off the back iron. And Dawkins tracks down the loose ball in the corner. Cox tip. No true five for this Duke team like they've had so many times in the past. But one of the more athletic groups Coach K has ever had. Guard oriented. A lot of people have talked about the similarities between this year's Duke team and the USA basketball gold medal winning Olympic team that he's coached as you see Jabari Parker. Uh, continues to attack the paint. He hasn't shot the ball well from the exterior, but he's been a menace inside against the Phoenix. And now Elon playing that zone. It's going to be interesting to see how Duke attacks that because that's something they can see a lot of this season. Simply because they're so good individually, teams may not feel like they can guard a man to man. They're going to have to guard them zone. Troutman goes baseline with a spin move and blocked by Parker. There's some defense for you. Oh, no, and those are things that he can do. He's shown that he can block shots. This and another, but when we start talking elite level yeah. defenders, I think he's honestly too good offensively to where he knows that I can't expend that much, <laughs> that much energy on the defensive end. And but, he can get away with it. But one thing I do love about him is the fact that he's come to Duke and he's trying. He's making the effort to get it done on the defensive side because, one, he's a great person. He doesn't want to let his teammates down. Koch falls, that's a trap. In position, that's the thing about being a freshman. You have to make sure you're in the right position at all times on the defensive end. But he's really starting to make more of a concerted effort to do that. To do. Emil Jefferson, a beast on the offensive glass, but had that one taken away. There's Eisenbarger. Works inside and got fouled on the floor. Thing that you can be sure of, that shooting stroke is not going to change. He's one of the best doing it. SoCon's active leader in made threes. He's got 227 in his career. Jefferson back to the bucket. Now Dawkins got tripped and foul. Years, these are perennial NCAA tournament teams. Dawkins off of the inbound. Unbelievable, this guy. That's his fourth three of the game in as many tries. The interesting part about that is with him playing this well, somebody's minutes are going to get cut. Yeah. <laughs> who is going to be that guy? I mean, Rasheed Suleiman is not playing as much, and you're talking about a guy who was all ACC rookie last year and is a great basketball player. Duke is so talented. Unreal ability to shoot the basketball for Andre Dawkins right there. Hit six threes on Saturday against Eastern Michigan. He's hit his first four this afternoon. And against good defense, it's not as though Elon is, they're guarding it well. He's just making shots over good defense. Cook a step back three. Troutman with the rebound. Well, Elon's got to get something going in a hurry here. This thing's going to get away from him before the break. One of the things the Duke staff told us earlier today is they're going to make sure that Elon beats them. They're going to have to do it with two pointers. They and one thing about Duke, you see a timeout that passes. He makes sure his guys get opportunities to shoot on these rims here in Greensboro Coliseum. Saw Elon getting outscored by eight in the paint. They've hit just one of their six threes. One of the top three point shooting teams in the country knew that they'd have to shoot it well to stand any kind of chance this afternoon. Beaumont with some room with the shot clock winding down. 
And then Parker fouled him. Fresh shot clock for the Phoenix. Here's Sampson in the corner. Don't bring it out front to set up. Parker got his hand on it. Beaumont found it, laid it in. And I tell you, it's been a, a extremely difficult for Elon to score. And the pressure from Duke, they're getting the job done defensively, and they're getting out in passing lanes. More importantly, they're pressuring the basketball at every position. Parker took a look down to see if he was behind the stripe. His foot was right on it, didn't take the shot. Eisenbarger went for the steal. Thornton inside to Jefferson. Beaumont tracks down the miss. Here's Troutman working against Jefferson. Forced it up wildly, couldn't get it to go. Thornton's got it for the Blue Devils. Suleiman goes baseline and banks it in. It's almost a shame that we don't get to talk about him as much. Rasheed Suleiman, an unbelievable basketball player. One of the things with him, you know, he's not in the starting lineup right now because Tyler Thornton and Josh Harrison, those guys are bringing more of a defensive presence. But Rasheed Suleiman is a unreal basketball player. I mean, very good. And if he is able to accept this role of coming off the bench and really being that spark, when you bring Suleiman and Dawkins both in, you, you don't drop off. There's no drop off in scoring from Duke. It's one of the reasons they average 85 points a game. One of the best scoring teams in the country but because they have weapons at every position. If you add to another one, you talk about Emil Jefferson who can score the basketball. So there's no position where they can't score on the court. He's their most efficient scorer, 67% field goal percentage. But Rasheed Suleiman brings an offensive presence as well. And he's able to make tremendous plays on the offensive end. Good closeout from Dawkins, who now wants it in the corner and gets it. His first miss from three. And Beaumont with the rebound. Hamilton. Tie up sends as a freshman last year. McDonald's All American played on the USA All Night. USA 19 U team gold medal team this year and this guy is having a hard time getting minutes That's just how talented they are. Yeah, the bench outscoring Elon 20 to 2 It's very deep Duke team. The bench is outscoring the starters. Yeah, <laughs> 20 to 10. Yeah <laughs> Open three for cook. Yes Everything going right for Duke yeah. right now. Quinn must have heard me so he had to get three for the starters right there. <laughs> <laughs> Elon team that averages 81 points a game on pace for about 30 right now against Duke. Hook with a no look. Jefferson gets blocked by Troutman. His second of the game, 25th of the season. Good job of transition defense, though, by Duke. And one thing you see, though, with Troutman, shot blocking doesn't matter what conference he's playing, and he can do it against anybody. And doing a great job just meeting Emil Jefferson at the summit and then coming down and getting to where. Elon needs to have some production in the post because that's where Duke struggles to defend and Troutman getting it done on both ends of the floor. Hood goes against the Hairston screen. Defense collapses, so Cook is open, but can't rattle at home, and Troutman in for the board. Hamilton off the ball line. They will be heard of at the end of the year. I mean, he always finds a way to get to the Final Four, so nothing would surprise me if we see them playing the last weekend. Parker couldn't hit, and a foul on the rebound goes on. Off the back iron with the front end of the one and one. But Elon with the rebound. Parker closes out on Cox, who looks to go baseline. Good rotation, Eisenberger. That's where Elon really hasn't been able to get going, haven't been able to knock down the three-pointer. And of course, that's extremely important to the way that they play. That's how they get Troutman touches. But more importantly, they spread teams' defenses out behind the three-point line. Only one for eight from the three-point line early in this game. Double comes. Why leave Dawkins open? It's 
started like he did for a good chunk of his first couple of years on campus. And wound up dropping a season high 20. Andre Dawkins, a guy that came out of high school actually a year earlier. You know, we talk about team to get better as the season goes along. And every year there's something with Duke. There's a move that Coach K might make or some player steps up. There's always something with Duke every year that gives them that extra bonus normally midway through. Maybe it could be Marshall Plumley this season. Eisenbarger behind Troutman. He's got the three. That's a defensive breakdown right there for Duke. Regardless of the score, Coach K wants to make sure they play this the right way, and Eisenbarger should not get any wide open looks. The guy that's made almost 230 three pointers never should get an easy look like that. And Cook took an early shot. The clock inside of a minute. Here's Troutman working against Plumley with a nice up and under move. I tell you, Lucas Troutman can play. It doesn't matter where he is, whatever it may be, he can play. Because he can go up against seven footers, it doesn't matter the size. And again, Duke is susceptible inside the paint. And he has really exposed that when he's got his opportunities to score. About a five second differential between game and shot as his first half winds down. Duke trying to win its fifth straight to cap non conference play. Here's Rodney Hood. Hood with four to shoot, a runner. Rebound Koch, five seconds left. Koch with his eyes up. Koch with two. And his first half comes to a to keep that contact, but with Dawkins, you can't give him any space because he lets it fly quickly. Hit his first four threes, has missed his last two. The second half begins with Elon with the ball. They've won five of seven after a two and four start. Preseason pick to win the SOCOM. But get out of the gate slowly and now trying to recover from a huge deficit. Drummond had a shot from the elbow if he wanted it. Instead works into Hairston who goes straight up and forces the turnover. Now Parker with numbers behind the back to lay it in. And now you start to see just a little bit of the versatility that Jabari Parker has. You know his greatest skill is the ability to shoot the basketball. As he comes up with great hands on that play. Comes up with a steal and Duke getting out in transition. And this is where they're so before one o'clock. All four of those games start by one o'clock. Of course, you got the Rose Bowl later in the day. Plenty of other college football action over the next couple of days. Quinn Cook with a steal. And Cook takes it right into Koch. But gets fouled. So be it, because they're going to go down and right now, you know, Coach Wojciechowski talked about the fact that Early in the season, they try to just outscore everybody. But you look at a guy like Quinn Cook and look at how Jabari Parker, their pressure is. You come out of high school, if you look at this, this Duke team, Quinn Cook was a McDonald's All-American. I know that because he's a point guard at Oak Hill, you know, right out of my bloodline. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then you talk about Tyler Thornton. You talk about, you know, Rodney, all these guys are high school All-Americans. These guys, you have to make them play defense. That's just the reality behind it. But the one thing that Coach K has been able to do is been able to teach that. They guys get better on the defensive end, but it doesn't start from day one. Thornton tries a three and knocks it down. 8 0 Duke run to begin the second half after Elon scored the final five points of the first. And I, and I tell you this too, and you see them come up with another near turnover. When Quinn Cook was at Oak Hill, dropped over the bucket. He really started to become that floor general, but a lot of it had to do with the fact that he became more of a defender. Had eight steals against UCLA two games ago, and you can see he is starting to be a menace defensively. And I think Tyler Thornton has had a huge impact on him in doing so. Here's Hood. That's a tough shot that wouldn't go. Transfer in 33 seasons under Mike Krzyzewski. Hood started his career at Mississippi State. Meridian, Mississippi native. Cook gets called for the five. First guy in the 34 years Coach K has been the coach to have that be the case. And when he showed up at ACC Media Day and I asked Tyler who their captains were, and he pointed at Rodney Hood, I knew that he was special. And I can tell you this guy, <laughs> Even though he missed that, I can tell you when I knew Jabari was special, especially in the heart of Coach K, is when he told me back in the spring that he was going to wear number one. Mm. That's the mascot's number. Nobody <laughs> wears number one. <laughs> Eddie Nifty ball handling. Now numbers free line inside. Duke recovers defensively. A couple of years. And now he finds himself team captain at Duke. Well, and it speaks a lot to the young man and his character because, again, when you're talking about playing at Duke under Coach Krzyzewski, 
Being team captain doesn't have a lot to do with your basketball ability. It has more to do with your character and your personality, and he's shown that, and he just happens to be a really good basketball player. Beaumont, the three. Elon's going to need a lot more of that. The three ball is how they compete. That's how they win. And they've got to start confidently stepping up and knocking down some of those shots. When you play against Duke, you're not going to get a lot of them simply because their defensive style, they play in the passing lanes. But Elon has to start hunting some of those. Elon averages nine and a half. Freshman Eddie inside and Parker's gonna get called for the goaltending. Attack the paint. That's the way they're gonna have to do it. That's the only way they're gonna be able to get their, their shooters open. Suleiman, the kick to Dawkins. Extra pass cook for three. Beautiful ball movement by Duke, starting with Rasheed Suleiman penetrating, and then Andre Dawkins, the shooter, making the extra pass, and that's really good team basketball. Troutman got I don't even count Jabari Parker as a freshman Tyler and this might be the best freshman in the ACC and in my opinion He was the best point guard coming out of last year's class when you talk about Cat Barber at NC State and you talk about Andrew Harrison of the Kentucky and all the guys that came out in my opinion Tyler Ennis was the best all-around point guard and he's really showing that this year at Syracuse originally from Canada Played his college basketball on the East, or his high school basketball on the East Coast, St. Benedict. I tell you, who's making that schedule for Eastern Michigan? You got to go yeah. to Cameron Indoor and then go to Syracuse and play in the Dome? Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's called murderer's row is simply what that is. I mean, you have to play those two teams back to back. That's a, that's a tough stretch. Getting them ready for Mac play. Max, pretty darn good. You got accurate. <laughs> the strength of schedule is pretty good. Yeah. Now you got to win some of those, right. I mean, you know, which makes it even tougher, but uh, no question about the strength of schedule for Eastern Michigan. Toledo played Kansas last night, lost by 10, their first loss. They were one of the remaining unbeatens. Eddie locks one up, he doesn't even catch rim. Cook lops for Parker, who trapped it against the rim, got it back, and scored. And you see that Jabari Parker is upset about the fact that he missed it, not because because he still got two points, but he didn't get Quinn Cook the assist. Mm. And so from that standpoint, you know, this is one thing about this team. We talked to Wojo about it, and I talked to, you know, Tyler Thornton about it earlier this year. There's no jealousy on this team. If uh, this up to these Duke guys, Jabari Parker can score 30 points a game. They don't care. As long as they win, that's the biggest concern. Jefferson. Oh, shoot, too. He scrapes the front of the rim. Yeah, Bill Jefferson still trying to get the feeling back in his elbow. You can see he's got a bit of a stinger, and the official was trying to give him time to kind of work it out, but he's still messing with it. He's kept that have much feeling in the elbow. Beaumont banks it in. Beaumont with nine to lead Elon. Parker a step back two. Jefferson with the offensive rebound on the second try tips it in. And he's and he's calling for a sub. He doesn't have feeling in that arm. You can see it right now. He's grimacing. That's one of those things. That I don't, hopefully it's just a stinger or he hit the funny bone a little bit. But when you're Duke, when you talk about this talent, their depth is their strength. They can't they can't lose guys because of course going into ACC play that would be detrimental for them. Troutman got blocked by Jefferson. He seems to be doing just fine, whatever the elbow problem is. Cook with a spin and lays it in. Beaumont can't hit. Dawkins with the rebound. Yeah, and then a flight like that. He's not a big guy, but he's a lot bigger than he was when he first got to do. And so he gets fouled on the floor. Yeah. 11 2 run for the Blue Devils, largest lead of the game as Duke looks for its fifth consecutive win to cap 2013. Sampson. It's been a rough day shooting the ball for him. He hasn't gotten many looks either. He's really had to search for looks, and he just hasn't been able to come up with them. Dawkins has had no shortage of good looks. 
<laughs> and that's the difference when you, you know, you have to think about the guys that Andre Dawkins is playing with. They command so much attention, so you can't leave anyone open. And oftentimes, they find yourself with just a defensive lapse. And with Andre Dawkins, he doesn't need much time to get it off. You can defend him well. He can still get a quality shot. Ryan Winter scores. Five of those eight Duke threes he saw just a moment ago have come from Andre Dawkins. I tell you, I actually played for Brian Winter's dad in Denver. He was one of my assistant coaches out there. And Brian was a little bitty guy way back then. He's got it quite grown quite a bit since. <laughs> yeah, he's not small age. anymore. 6'7", 220. Suleiman down the lane. That's a tough shot, but that's his game right there. That's one thing that he does. He's able to put that pressure on opposing defenses by getting into the paint. Very good athlete and is able to contort his body, really score well at the rim. Winters again, back to back buckets. For the Denver native. He's coming in, really starting to give him a little bit of boost right there. Four straight points. I'm sure Dad is down in Charlotte proud to see that. Missed the first month with the knee injury. Starting to ease back. Really, this entire roster finally getting to full strength. And that's one of the reasons, you know, you talk about their 7-6 record. It's just Suleiman gets involved in the three-point party, and he's capable of doing that, too. I mean, we talked about his giftedness on the offensive end of the floor. Just finding opportunities for him to really get in the flow offensively has been a struggle, but you have to like what he's doing coming off the bench and provides a tremendous weapon. Sampson way too strong. Good hustle play by Blake who stepped out. You know, nobody wants to be shown up. And, it, and that's one of the things when you play against a really good team, if you don't come out prepared to play, I mean, you can get shown up. And right now, Duke's not going to get off the stuff, take their foot off the pedal. They're going to keep playing hard. Parker for the contact. 1800s when uh, you still had to stop the game and take the ball out of the peach basket every time somebody made a shot. 1911, first time they played these two schools. Elon all time against the ACC is 1 in 25. The long time they got a win against the ACC was Clemson 2005. So, like you said, those wins came well before the Atlantic Coast Conference. But if I'm Elon, I still count it. Oh, yeah. Take it where you can get it. Moving screen. And turned over to Duke. Going to be good for him. And he's always going to be able to play with very good talent. And that's one of the things you'll always have a chance to win. And when you play in a program like Duke. Suleiman. Jones diving to the floor, scrapping for it. Boy, he's perfect shooting guard mold for Coach K's system, right? Yeah, he is. I mean, but I don't think it can get any more perfect than Andre Dawkins. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but when you look at that, I mean, Matt Jones definitely shoots the basketball extremely well. Good athlete, can get out and defend. Matt, Matt Jones and Jabari Park, I'm sorry, and Julius Randle actually played together. A lot growing up in high school on the AU circuit. So, of course, he'd give it everything that you have when you're on the court. You can rest on the bench. But when you're out there between those four lines, he expects you to give him everything. Duke has scored 25 of the last 29 points after Lee and Grant Hill and Christian Leitner and this, that, and another. And the way that they covered up the wings when you tried to run your offense against them was just amazing. How long they were athletic and they still play the same way defensively that they did 20 plus years ago when I played against them and they've done that ever since coach K's been there some people say that the group that most closely mirrors this one under coach K would be those early 90s teams as far as the athleticism Eisenbarger Kirsten fresh into the game with the rebound Christian Harrison scrambles for it. Eisenbarger for three. It's good to see him getting back into the rhythm, knocking down some shots. Of course, when you're talking about Elon, you're talking about one of the best teams in the Southern Conference and, you know, preparing themselves to make a strong run to get into the NCAA tournament. They won the North Division last year, unable to win a tournament and get into the NCAAs, but they're looking forward to having a strong year once they get into conference play. 
Eisenbarger tried to tip it away from Jones, who fouled it and drained it. You see just a little bit of his shooting touch right there. I mean, one thing that Duke doesn't lack is guys that can make shots and do it offensively. Whether they can get it done as a team defensively will be the question as to whether or not they're playing that first weekend in April or not, but they can definitely score the basketball. Beaumont wide open. And Elon, one of the nation's top three-point shooting teams, has not been good out there. Four for 17 overall. And they haven't gotten a lot of clean looks. It's one of the things that Duke was going to make a concerted effort to take them out of. Jeff Jefferson makes the free throw. He was largest lead of the game at 38. Good to see him back in the game. Obviously, that was a stinger. Eisenbarger gets blocked by Plumlee, who's not played a ton today, but has logged some quality. Force in there. You don't have to do a scoring. Just make sure that you use that size. And, you know, Marshall may be the best athlete of the three of those guys. So, I mean, he has the ability to get up in the air and block shots. Beaumont able to hook this one over him. And I want, the best size. Yeah, but I'm saying, I think he's, he's the tallest of yep. the three of them as well. But I tell you, those two guys were... They were a little wider. Yeah. <laughs> a little better on the offensive end, This too. is true. That three rattles out for Shemi Ojale, freshman out of Ottawa, Kansas. Part of a good recruiting class last year that obviously included Jabari Parker. Kill reach 20 points today, but he no doubt will again before long. The match and then set a Duke record for a freshman for 20 point games. He's got 10. The record is 11 at the way he's playing this year. I'm sure at some point he'll have a 30 point game to balance out this 10 point game that he's had here today. But one thing about him, he's not concerned about the numbers. It's more about the winning. Koch can't hit Plumlee the rebound. It'd be easy for a freshman as highly touted as he is to come in and have guys around the program that have either been there or came in with him highly touted and see all the credit he's getting and be jealous about it create rifts in the team but that's not the case for this group it's not at all and you know there are a couple of factors behind that one is the people that they have in the program not only the players but you know when you talk about the players Tyler Thornton in my opinion is a vocal communicative leader who basically is a guy that's going to make his opinion known and they follow him Josh Harrison similar to that but then you look at the hierarchy at Duke you talk about coach K but then you look at guys Jeff Cable Steve Wojciechowski and Nate James they played here they understand what it's like to be a part of it that's one facet and the second facet is when you start playing pickup and you play with Jabari Parker and you realize this guy's just flat out better than everybody else. You kind of have to just give him a little leeway and say, hey, we got to make sure we all the time because they know I've been around those guys. You know, who would I take as the number one pick between him, Julius Randle, Andrew Wiggins. And you were around all those guys. And Aaron Gordon, yeah. who I put in the same class as those guys. And really are, he lists himself shorter because he's close to 6'9 and he is 6'8. But with his size, ability to shoot the basketball, he's going to be a problem for, the, for, for defenders for a long time. You had to coach against Andrew Wiggins in that Hoop Summit game. How about a guy that isn't on that list because he's not playing college basketball, but was also on that world squad, also on some draft radars, Dante Exum. And Exum is a is a extreme talent. Exum about 6'4" can play either guard position and a very good athlete and most likely we'll see him in college basketball next year but a guy of course he's not you know he's not coming out of US hospital so he could put his name right. in the draft you know and he played as an underclassman last year but he's going to cause us a, possibly a few nightmares yeah. you know, this year coming up in the hoop summer. right you get to play against you again versity and the experience for students there so he told me one of the best stats going three to two girls to guys ratio <laughs> That's a recruiting tool right yeah. there, I'll tell you what, for him. But, you know, and then one of the things that Matt Matheny doesn't talk about, but Matt Matheny was one of the guys responsible for recruiting and coaching Steph Kerr. And you talk about the run that Davidson made, well, Coach Matheny was on the sidelines but during that stretch. And, you know, so you talk about using the three-pointer as your weapon, <laughs> they definitely did that Davidson with them there. You know, Davidson, a great Southern Conference program. Drive the hood with a take.
Troutman. Bases up on Plumley. And able to finish. And Troutman, no stranger to Plumley. Those guys play to get to play together in high school, and Troutman, of course, having to deal with all the Plumleys at some point. So from that standpoint, they're not strangers at all to having to go against each other. It's just like practice for him. Three from Hood. And right now you look at it, three minutes left to go, and what is a blowout? And you ask, why is Rodney Hood on the floor? Well, Rodney Hood hasn't played his best game. So for Coach K, he's really trying to get Rodney Hood into a rhythm right now because they've got a huge game this weekend at Notre Dame where Coach K will have to go and take on one of his protégés, to say the least, and Mike Gray, the head coach at Notre Dame, and one of the first time that Coach K's ever had to play against one of his assistants. He, the shot doctor, coach at Division II Philadelphia University until 1999. And Jones with it. Plumley got cut off. Jones for three. Elon will go into SOCOM play seven and seven after a tough non-conference slate. Pearson tries one and buries it. His first three-point make of the season. I think seven and seven in a tough slate. You would look at it and say disappointing, but when you talk to Coach Matheny, he doesn't look at it that way. Not at all. And he told us, I like where we are. He knew that he had taken on some tough competition. Talk about George playing at Georgetown, playing Duke, playing at Colorado. You've got they put some they 